All right, look at this thing. This is like the final iteration of my Subaru. Like if I really just went crazy and was like, I'm gonna make my Subaru really, really, really crazy, this is it. Um, so apparently it's a, uh, it's an old 2.2 liter closed deck Subaru block. That's the legacy in there. Um, 2.2 liter closed deck block uh, with a later like generation two camshaft, uh, uh, crankshaft. So it's a 2.3, like one five stroker, um, just all fully, fully built. And Matt was saying that this is like the third iteration of this car. What year is this? Is this a... Uh... I don't know. I don't know how to read that and actually tell what year this car is. Probably says on the door card. Anyway. Um, I forget what the turbo is. It's huge. It's rotated. Um, unequal length. Uh, unequal length parent headers. Killer B. Oil pan. Full, full, full chassis bracing all, all up and down underneath there. Uh, there's a huge surge tank there. Yeah. And I just, I really like this paint. This is such a cool color. Nice paint job. It's so clean. And these are nine inch wide wheels. Graham lights. Which does really inspire and like drive home to me like I need to fit wider wheels on my uh, on my WRX. I need to figure out how I'm going to get wider wheels on there because that's tire is pretty much what holds me back right now. Tire and gearing. Anyway, let's go for a walk. Let's look at other fun stuff while we're here. I like this because it's the same color as my car. And I like these cut fenders. I think this is kind of awesome that someone cut these fenders here and then just pulled them out and welded in a little bracket so that they're a little bit wider to fit wider wheels and then also to evacuate air from underneath the hood. That's pretty cool. Set up like a half cage in there. That's neato. Here's Matt Miner's square body. Oh, I forget what year this is, but it's a Texas truck. Nine inch suspension lift, 39 inch tires. They don't even look like it on this thing. It's so big. He was saying this is actually a BMW color, this brown. hand-painted Chevrolet in the same tan on there. I don't know anything about these cars, but they look fast and fun. Huh. Oh well. I just cut myself in here so that I can explain what I'm about to say. Um, I'm about to talk about what Matt Miner did when he reprogrammed the ECU of this car and why it's such a good idea uh, for a, an older, higher mileage turbo car like this. So, but what you have to understand, what I take for granted in my explanation and what you have to understand is that um, the way that an computer controlled engine works the computer has tables of every rpm point like revolutions per minute and load on the motor so there's there's a basically like a one plane is rpm the other plane is load and so the computer 
where whatever you ask the motor to do based on how you're driving and your throttle and speed and gear and everything, um, the computer will calculate the load and then it will look at its little table and it will be like, okay, the load is 2.3 and my RPM is 2,700 and so it'll go over to 2,700 and it'll go up to 2. Point whatever I just said for load and it'll be like that point will tell it inject this much fuel um, and have timing advance that is when uh, it tells the spark plugs to fire for each cylinder like how far before top dead center or uh, yeah or, or after um, it'll all reference that graph uh, and so Matt Miner adjusted a whole bunch of those values. Okay, now I'm gonna splice this in and you'll go back to my explanation of what he did. Okay, well, I'm glad that's over. Um, I am so glad I did this. But gosh, what a, every time I, I go and get a car dyno tuned, it's, it's an ordeal. It's like a real emotion, emotionally draining, like emotional ordeal. Um, so I put 89 octane in the car uh, to drive down there because I wanted to have it tuned on 89 because Maine does not, it's, you can't get 93 very many places. Uh, so it's a lot of 91. And I was like, yeah, I want a safety margin. What if I put bad gas in it sometime? What if, what if, what if? I don't know, anyway. And like the, the whole point of this car, as I've said over and over, point of the car is not to be fast. So anyway, put 89 in it, started driving down, and it, you know, the whole reason I was getting it tuned was because I could see it pulling timing and doing weird stuff. And having 89 octane in it, it really did it on the drive down on the highway. I'd be cruising along just like this, like, light load just cruising on the highway here I'll show you the access port right now um, it would be it would be running fine and then it would lean out a little bit or the like it would detect knock and uh, fine knock learn eventually I was just driving the fine lot knock learn which is how it's adjusted timing based on the conditions so like ongoing adjustments would be pulling 10 degrees feedback knock uh, it would just randomly knock and pull like 10 12 degrees of timing and the car was running smoothly I couldn't feel anything it wasn't like hiccuping or doing anything like you know if I wasn't looking at the access port I wouldn't know I'm just looking at that knock active switch so that's the knock active switch up there on the top right hand corner that is just on or off is the ECU seeing knock right now so right now off no no knock um, and the feedback knock learn that's pulling timing in direct reaction to knock that is happening like right now or just happened to be safe to preserve the, the engine. Um, all right, so got down there, you know, you saw all of that walking around looking at the car. So uh, Matt tuned the car and he said that basically there were two things that like what I was seeing like was like I knew that something was wrong and I based on the whole fuel system, coils, everything having been replaced, I was pretty sure that it was just the mapping. And so he explained what was going on. So the base maps um, from Cobb, the base maps on the access port for these older cars, he said, are just sort of weird. And the timing maps don't transition well when you're going from like cruising at light load to some load to like getting into it, getting on boost. Um, so he was saying that like the maps for cruising on the highway would run like 40 degrees of timing, like, like they'd be way advanced and aggressive. Um, but that doesn't take into account, like, what if you go up a grade, you know, and like the load goes up slightly. And so that's what I was seeing on the drive down here. Uh, it was pulling timing at light load. Uh, or at just cruising at like light throttle cruising uh, if it got under a little bit of load because the timing maps The base timing map was extremely advanced But then so it'd be up here And then he said that like you get into a little bit of boost and the map just goes like uh, and like yanks all the timing out of it 
And I noticed that. I noticed that if I gave it a little bit of boost, like not even getting into positive manifold pressure, just like if you, you can hear it, that that whistle, like I'm not even really touching boost with that, but uh, that shifts to a different map of timing, pulls like 30 degrees of timing out of it, just like that. And so I would do that and uh, the access port, I could see the ECU, everything, like no more feedback knock, no more fine knock learn, uh, ECU would be totally happy. Um, and then also that it would pull timing uh, sometimes when I got off the throttle and also I was seeing it run lean sometimes run into like the 16s and stuff um, so anyway so Matt changed the mapping like the values in the graphs and then and like brought some values up and some down so that now timing isn't as advanced as I'm cruising on the highway so it leaves a little bit of room for like going up a grade or like getting my foot into it a little bit to like adjust my speed whatever um, so that's all cleaned up. The other thing, so this has got side feed injectors. I knew that. I know side feed injectors are not great. Um, it's a technology that people, manufacturers have really moved away from. Pretty much everything is top feed now. Anyway, side feed injectors are a little weird and uh, they have a tendency to over time slowly, I mean all injectors flow slowly less and less as they get older, they get clogged. The spray pattern isn't as clean, all that whatever good stuff. So anyway, uh, he said that he, in just like the first dyno poll way that he could tell that the injector scaling, like what the ECU thinks, the how much fuel the injector is injecting at a given duty cycle, a given amount of like voltage applied to it, that that was based on when the car was new, uh, you know, and they were at 100% capacity. And now the injectors have like degraded to the point where they're, you know, I don't know what, like 90% capacity or something hypothetically. But anyway, the injectors can't inject as much fuel regardless of at any point. But so if, if they're only 90% of what they were, if you are trying to inject, run them at half their duty cycle, you know, they're actually only going to inject, uh, I can't do the math, but they're, they're going to inject 90% of what you wanted across the entire operating range of the motor. And so particular points where the mapping would have been pretty lean to begin with, it was a little dangerously lean. So there were points at like light throttle at cruising where I was seeing it fall off to like 16 to one, which is really lean. Um, and he said that at wide open throttle, running it wide open throttle, he saw it get into like the mid 12s, like, like, and again, that's, that's a little bit too lean air fuel ratio for, uh, for a turbo car and also a turbo car like this that's um subaru two and a half liter flat fours are don't have the greatest reputation for piston uh durability and also has 137 30 oh, almost 138 thousand miles on it so you know all those components are a little bit tired so he uh rescaled the injector maps to more like where he thought the injectors really were and just to like where they would be so that uh, they would actually be spraying enough fuel into the motor um, based on like him looking at his his wideband. Um, I think he said that he just changed them from being like brand new. These were maybe like five, I forget, 550s or something like that, CC injectors. And he just basically changed them to being like 500 cc injectors because he thinks that's a good rough ballpark of what they have degraded to at this point point. and with all of that happening like now this thing is totally happy and it's just like cruising along looking at the knock switch no knock nothing it's not pulling any timing um it's awesome so i'm so glad that i went down and did this took care of it um uh now it's you know it's a much happier motor uh, should be safer, more reliable, runs more smoothly. It made like 220 pound-feet of torque at the wheels and just over 200 uh, horsepower. Like I said, I didn't want to push it. I just wanted it like cleaned up and stuff. And uh, uh, what was I going to say? Cleaned up. <clears throat> and uh, he, oh right, yeah. Um, also, it's got such a tiny turbo. I know these have tiny turbos going into it he was like it has such a tiny turbo the tiny turbo is the limiting factor like 
the turbo just can't make that much boost near redline. Um, so it doesn't matter if like it's running a little bit rich. Right, yeah, because it's it's just limited really by, by turbo. Um, yeah, so now it's safer, reliable, um, smoother, better to drive. I really, 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 really 100% recommend, sorry, my arm gets tired, I keep moving the camera. I highly recommend if you have a higher, higher mileage Subaru, uh, go get a dyno tuned. Like, yeah, it costs money and it's a hassle and everything and stuff, but like it's so, so worth it from a, a drivability, reliability standpoint. Um, you know, this, this, when I bought this car, I knew I was gonna do this. This was like the most important reliability thing I was gonna do, aside from putting a working fuel pump in it. So, uh, that's that. Uh, I guess here, you can look at my dyno graph here. I will just, there, there it is. Look at that amazing dyno graph. It was hilarious looking at this thing on the dyno and looking at the numbers and seeing it like just barely touch 200 horsepower and being like, yep, this is probably one of the one of the lowest horsepower cars that's been on that dyno in uh, in weeks, I don't know, months since the last time he like tuned a like tiny turbo Miata or something like that. All right, you can keep driving, get back to Maine.